two. Welcome in to another episode of Betting the Pitch NFL Edition. I'm your host, the real underscore G Warner. I have eight underscore Snicker, Andrew Snicker. If you don't know his Twitter by now, then you clearly are not a fan of the show, and I'm very disappointed in you. So go hit that follow button, especially because he said his last four best bets, including leaving me alone for our last episode. Uh, but he gave me a pick. It did win. We're together seven and one last eight. If my math is correct from free throw shooting, I think that's 86% if you put it that way. So we're closing the year well. I know you were on the road for a lot of Sunday and uh, have many excuses why you left me as a one-man band. Uh, how are you feeling, 4-0? Uh, still a half game behind me, unfortunately. Still, I know. I can't keep up or I can't catch up. Um, I'm I'm trying to keep up. It's been a wild week for us, Griffin. Yeah, we were uh, doing hurricanes at Pat O's in uh, New Orleans before our beloved alma mater uh, got penis-sized. Circumcised, yeah. maybe, is a better way to describe that. I had a good time, though. We had, I had fun. Yeah. If I wasn't a Texas fan, I probably would have bet Washington, but I guess that's easier to say now. It's easy to say now. Although yeah. I did tell our bartender before we left uh, to, to sprinkle some on the over. So I hope he took my advice. Yeah. yeah. Um, since it's a, this is a pro football show, we will. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Line, but. Um, it was nice to see you finally and your uh, your lovely wife. But we're back now to the NFL, and we're going to do a seven-pack for this uh, final regular season episode. We're still going to be with you for the playoffs, uh, so stick around for that. Hopefully, we'll never lose again. It's probably unlikely, but uh, based on how we've won loss in our last four episodes, let's keep it rolling. We'll start with Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, please do that. If you're not, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, leave a five star review. It's huge for the search rankings. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. But we'll start with Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Huge rivalry, and Baltimore has locked up the one seed. So uh, this number has uh, not really moved much. I guess they're waiting for uh, flinch scenarios before the numbers came out. Pittsburgh at minus. They were the three and a half point favorite. It's pretty much stayed the same at Bet Online. Uh, if you are not a member there just yet, check out a link at the podcast description. You can get a free 50% sign up bonus. I would suggest taking advantage of all casino dollars you can get for free. But the total opened 37 and a half. It's down to 34 and a half. I think that's more of a reference to Baltimore sitting a lot of players. Um, but we get to this crazy scenario where we have Pittsburgh on the road at Baltimore, a three and a half point favorite. That's where I'd like to start because Baltimore, maybe not playing their best players, but there's only so many t men on a roster and you have to activate 53 of them. Um, maybe Lamar Jackson doesn't play. And that's certainly a big downgrade to Tyler, Tyler Huntley, I believe, but, or Brett Huntley, whatever his name is. Um, Tyler. Tyler. I just like, can we give Pittsburgh have a lot to play for here? Of course, Baltimore have nothing because they've already clinched the one seed. Is that enough for you to want to bet Pittsburgh as a favorite at yeah. MP Bank Stadium in the charm city of Baltimore? Yeah, it makes me very nervous to, and I think, I mean, that's, I know this, if you, if you were there at the very, very open of this line, then you probably, you could have gotten this below the three with the Steelers. So there has been action, you know, early in the week type action, uh in favor of pittsburgh um but yeah like it like you said it, there's only so many guys on a roster and uh baltimore is the kind of team that i i don't even if they're sitting a certain amount of players i actually don't hate tyler huntley he's he's got experience it's not like you're you're throwing a, a rookie into uh into a star his first start or or somebody that's uh you know never played in a high stakes game because he he did last year i believe last year yes that was last year so um, I also think with on the other side with Pittsburgh, if you're going to go with Mason Rudolph and some of the, the you know, drama or whatever's going on in the locker room that they say is not drama, um, you know, but Rudolph didn't look terrible. And this is actually probably a game that sets up pretty well for them where Baltimore, you know, Pittsburgh's likely not going to be chasing. Uh, you're not, you're not going to find yourself down by three touchdowns early in this game where it's all going to be on Mason Rudolph. Uh, similar pretty setup to what he's had the last couple of weeks when he's been successful. So, I mean, I can see the pathway for that uh, and just going on the road and, and saying, yes, Pittsburgh, take it above the key number of three. Um, <laughs> that's that's pretty scary but i i think there's probably some contrarian logic there to that 
I mean, I just don't think I can even consider Pittsburgh at this point as such a big favorite. I know no one who listens to any of my podcasts across the Bed and Pitch Podcast Network. Sure. Of course, you know I'm not into those sort of things, though I have been expanding my favorites tolerance a little bit this year. Um, if if I mean, I think most people know I'm even betting college basketball games like at minus four. It's crazy. I mean, minus three wow. is my cutoff. I have increased that by 33 percent. Unreal. But unreal. regardless, Pittsburgh, I mean, yeah, nice if they're not going to be in a chase mode, which as a favorite, you probably don't want to be in that situation uh, to try to cover spreads. So my interest here is to back Baltimore, but I don't really know. It's really hard to want to back a team that doesn't care about the result of a game. Of course, they don't want to go to overtime. So you could see that late go for two instead of uh, Dan Campbell's basically the head coach in the last 33 <laughs> seconds or so. Um, and like I said, there's only so many guys on a practice squad that can be elevated for this game. So there's still a lot of good Baltimore players that will be in there. The main ones or the dinged up ones surely won't be available. But I mean, in Pittsburgh, um, you get the whole must win thing to get in the playoffs. I love betting the teams that are not in that situation that don't have that pressure because your blood pressure already starts a lot higher than the other team. And it only gets worse every second you're not ahead. So uh, it's Baltimore for me or nothing. And I think it's under for me or nothing. Cause that is the game that Pittsburgh wants to play. As you said, they don't want to get in a shootout uh, even with uh, backups from Baltimore type scenario. I think there's a good chance. And that's why this total has dropped three points already to 34 and a half. Uh, but I guess I like home dog and I like under. So uh, do you have a, a feel for that? Or do you want me to move to the next? No, one? I mean, I like, I like the under there. That makes sense. Um, yeah. I, to, how much rest is too much rest for Baltimore? Like, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have the bye week as well. We've seen that blow up in some teams' face in the past. Yeah. Um, but because the one seed seems to make the Super Bowl every year now, um, with a, when they're the only team with a bye, um, to me, it seems relevant uh, that, or at least it doesn't seem like a big, big deal, the rest versus rust issue. Um, you certainly see that in baseball, but I think in this sport, you just want to have healthy, your best bodies available. Um, and based on what I've heard so far, as of recording this Thursday night, January 4th, 2024, the year of our Lord, 2024, um, I, it seems to me that Baltimore is focused on getting as much rest as possible for a playoff run. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm with you on both sides. I don't know if I'll find myself with a, with a bet slip for, for Baltimore, but, um, Certainly not going to be taking the Steelers at that number. Okay, next one. Go ahead. Now, I was kind of curious. I don't know where this is going to go. I think you might, if you wanted the Ravens, you might be able to wait a little bit longer and maybe get a four. There were some fours out there at some places. I see a so. four at Caesars right now, but I guess that's pretty hard because unless you're on the sports sure. property, or I guess maybe if you're in a legalized state, which uh, South Carolina, where I currently am talking to you in, is not. Texas is not either. Um, and Louisiana had some weird stuff that was going on with my betting apps this weekend. I'm not really sure if it's Louisiana's fault or whatever, but we'll move next to Houston and Indianapolis, a big matchup in the AFC South, I guess is a winner and you're in. So Saturday, I'm pretty interested, uh, on the anniversary of storming of the Bastille. No, I mean the Capitol. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Um, and hopefully I didn't just alienate, alienate any of our audience, but uh, that I think is factual. Uh, the Colts open a one point favorite and now a one and a half point dog. The total is 47 at open and we're still there with a little bit more juice to over. Uh, it seems like Houston's a little bit healthier than they have been in the past. Uh, Indianapolis about as healthy as possible getting Zach Moss back. It sounds like um, I'm not sure how big of a deal that is. But uh, I think Houston, it's, I'm a little bit surprised to see them a favorite on the road. I think we've talked this whole season that NFL home field advantage is very meaningless or limit. It doesn't mean as much as it used to in the past. We're down from three points to two and a half points, and I might even drop it to two next year. Um, indoors, I feel like that might play more to a Houston style of game with their receivers and uh, the quarterback that was meant to be their starting quarterback this whole season. Uh, I think Gardner Minshew has some limitations to say the least. And uh, it was a pretty wild game with them and the Raiders last weekend, but it was enough for Indianapolis to get this win and be in a situation where a win is there and they're in. Uh, do you agree with Houston as a favorite on the road? Yeah, I do. Uh, but you know, my, my Colts history this year, there are a couple, I think you need to monitor the the Colts offensive line. See what works there. I mean, the Texans by no means is a, 
it's an improved defense from from a year ago, but that wasn't that's not too hard to do. Um, and I, you know, I think that this, I like the scheme. I like what, with with a defensive minded coach what they've been able to accomplish. Um, but I think both both offenses should should have some realistic success. We've talked about the Colts secondary all year. It has not gotten any better. Um, and it's, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how, how they can respond to CJ Stroud now fully healthy and, and back in action. Um, I, I think this is a, a game with pretty high variance because I don't think the defenses are going to be able to do much. Um, comes down to how teams whoa, execute. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You don't think the Houston defensive line that basically sacked uh, our beloved Will Levis every uh, every play hey, in the second okay, half? Well, like, yeah. Will Anderson is is very good. I really like him. Um, I don't think they're going to make, either are going to make much of a difference in this in this spot. If, if well, I guess we, if the Colts are playing, you know, three backup, three backups along the offensive line, then um, maybe that's a different thing. But I, we're playing, I'm playing this hypothetical, expecting those guys to go in this game. I'm assuming if they can walk, they're going until they can't. And so to me, like I've seen, I haven't always been impressed with the Texans when they've gotten into the red zone, when they've gotten into the green zone with, which within the 40 to the goal line. Um, And I think this game is going to come down to if CJ Stroud really is that dude in the, in the red zone, um, because you're going to need touchdowns. I, my first initial thought is it's a very public thought would be to look to the over for this one. Um, but you know, that's, that's not usually the market that I try to get involved in. Okay. Uh, so you think, hold on. So you think this is going to be a potentially a shootout that Houston needs to keep up offensively on the scoreboard? No, um, I don't think necessarily they need, it's going to be a shootout that they need to keep up with. I think both teams are going to have a lot of chances getting into within the other, the opponent's forties and what they do with those chances. If you're settling for field goals, I don't think that's going to win the game. I've been pretty unimpressed with the Indianapolis offense this season. Um, I feel like as you sort of alluded to their record is amazing for, I think expectations. And honestly, yeah. a lot of the games I've watched involving them. Um, I watched them here in South Carolina because the Falcons are a local team, essentially, I guess I'm, in between the Panthers and the Falcons, what a great place to live for football. But um, it just seemed to me that the Colts were very concerned with running the ball with Jonathan Taylor, his first game back, uh, as I was very clued in for a fantasy reason. Um, They're doing a lot of play action, a lot of first down throws. um, And that makes me feel like there's less confidence in that offensive line than I feel like has ever existed with that team. Um, and at this point in the season, I feel like Houston's more likely, yes, they have the flashier quarterback and receivers, uh, but I feel like they're more likely to score points. So I feel like if anyone's chasing here, it's Indianapolis. So maybe it, uh, the more I talk or think about this, maybe it does seem justified that Houston flip flops from plus one to minus one. Um, I, I think they're probably the side I want here, though. I don't really love going against a, a crowd in a dome. I feel like there can be some noise stuff there that would be worrisome. Um, I think as a favorite, I don't think that Houston will make it towards my card or anywhere near it. Um, over, I guess makes sense, but I think you're requiring a lot of, uh, support in that over, or at least some sort of combination kumbaya, my, my Lord, uh, for Indianapolis doing something offensively. And I just haven't seen it. So that that's my biggest concern. I think something that I'll probably look to is potentially to put the Colts into a teaser. Ooh, try to get them to a full touchdown, eh? It's a seven and a half. You move it through the three and the seven. Um, I believe that that is a Wong teaser, not a wrong teaser, but I think one that they are juicing at a different price now across most sports books that are out. Yeah, you can, yeah, 12, maybe minus 120. But if you do it earlier in the week, sometimes it's, you can get it at 11 to 10. Um, That would be where I would probably be looking at this point. And if I would, yeah, I think um, getting, getting the home team, in a must win that kind of like you talked about with the home field. I would, I give them two and a quarter for home field on this one. Um, so yeah, give them above the touchdown. I, I would like that. Yeah. On the, on the, the bigger end of the, uh, of the, the home field advantage spectrum. Well, let's find a teaser partner then shall we? we'll move to Sunday okay. before we get there. We will have best bets coming end of show. Try to keep that seven, one record going on. Snickers four, no undefeated last four episodes. 
Um, and then if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com says three underscore you one of the best plot to get all my picks across all the sports. There's so many running together all at the same time right now. I don't know when I sleep. It actually, the answer is I don't, uh, especially when I go to new Orleans and see this guy who makes me drink a hurricane before noon, but you know, that, uh, and, and there are witnesses. So, uh, keep, keep, keep <laughs> we have that phot- photographic evidence. We're going to go through with the NFC uh, for our last four games that I offered a seven pack, a, uh, a baker's dozen or a, a bartender's dozen, half dozen, if you will. Um, so we're going to do the NFC North and South, and then we'll do the big Sunday nighter as our last game on this uh, on this grouping. So we'll start. I know there are other games that are interesting, but I'll, I'll start with Atlanta visiting New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans, a three and a half point favorite. And consider we were both just in the city limits. Hopefully no one's eating po' boys, because I can only imagine how you exercise after that, because I hit the treadmill today. And let's just say it hit me back. Uh, New Orleans opened a three and a half point favorite down to three. Total was 42 and a half down to 41 and a half. And this is all after a pretty dominant performance by New Orleans on the road at Tampa Bay, a best bet winner for a underscore S C H N I T K E R. Just in case you needed that spelling. Uh, and that's right. He's four and oh, in case you were wondering, um, where do we feel about the, uh, the saints, uh, for, I mean, they're only a three point favorite. I feel like Atlanta is getting a little too much respect considering their coach that probably gets fired if they lose this game. I think at three and a half, it's a different ball game because Atlanta refuses to play a game that's not within a what a four point, like four point window. I have every game that Atlanta was, plays is I a close game. Plus two and a half at Atlanta earlier this year that they lost the game but covered, which is <laughs> so. There you go. Uh, they they have played so many close games, and we can just go to town on uh, the coaching decisions and the offensive strategy or lack thereof for most of the season and the head scratching moves that they've done um, by drafting all of these skill players and then really not finding ways to feature them. Um, Yeah. I I really like, I think the saints have a great home field advantage. They, again, that's probably, we're going to move it towards the higher portion of, uh, and this is a rivalry game Uh, Falcons and saints. These are the the two that, that really uh, don't like each other. You can go back many years with fans egging the, the team buses before they get into the building. Like there it's like a legitimate, it feels as close as you can get to like a college rivalry with, uh, with these two teams. And uh, when you have a playoff on the line, that's, I think home field is, is warranted to, to move it to that, that peak. Um, yes. It does make me nervous to think about backing the saints for another week, especially in this league and a, a team that's been so inconsistent, but the trend of Derek Carr though, at least it's in our favor here. we got the saints at home, not, not having to go on the road and not having to be out in the elements. So should be able, they are a little bit healthier on offense as well. Um, the Falcons, you know, we that was our in the preseason. That was my pick to to win the NFC South. There's still a slim chance that that could happen, but they need a lot of help f- for that to to go through. Um, I feel like I mean we've been doing this for so many weeks. You know, we kind of know where we're at, but let's look at it maybe in a snapshot shot of the last five weeks. There's not not much of that sample that's given me confidence in Atlanta that Heineke and that. Arthur Smith is going to find clarity. I mean, Heineke that. is a definite. I mean, I would be yeah. on Saints right now minus three if Desmond Ritter was. If it was, if it was Ritter, I, or whatever, I would. I probably agree with you on that. I don't. I wouldn't. Heineke and Ritter to me are not much different. But yes, Ritter is careless with the football. I feel like we've seen a, a track of Taylor Heineke who at least like knows how to win a game because then he's pictured drinking a bunch of natty lights on a on a flight. But yeah. I I have not seen that at all from Atlanta. What I'm curious about is why the marketplace has knocked that half that hook off of Atlanta. Um because I would think New Orleans after a really good performance, really dominating a, a really hot Tampa team, whether they've been getting any respect from the marketplace or not for months now, it felt felt like in the Tampa Bay direction. Uh, but that was a pretty big win, pretty dominant. They're at home. They play better at home. They're in the dome, which, as you mentioned, is better for Derek Carr, probably better for Atlanta as well. But I mean, maybe a little bit neutralized there. Neither of these teams have college town or college sports that are in the city. So it makes sense that maybe this is the college rivalry equivalent. Um, I, I just feel like the saints feel a little cheap here. Yes. They're above our two and a half, uh, type of number, or maybe even two for home field advantage. But, um, 
very slim margin here for Atlanta to lose this game and cover certainly possible. And they've done that a lot this year, but usually I feel like it's them winning by two rather than uh, losing it to, to stay within that number. So it's hard for me to find reasons to want to back Atlanta here besides maybe the market liking them enough to shave off that half of a point. But um, I would think this probably climbs back towards that three and a half opener rather than hitting two and a half before this kicks off. It does feel like Atlanta has been that one of those teams this year that, um groups or the market has just not necessarily the public side of things but the other side that is potentially moving some of these lines uh has they've they've latched onto Atlanta and I don't know if they've really let go and it's almost one of the it feels like one of those teams that they've just been blanket betting um and I do understand I I see I could be swayed if someone came to me and said hey I have an Atlanta Falcons plus three and a half ticket um, where there's there's some value there um, because it, you know I don't and I'm not going to say the must win part but the the Falcons offense it's this idea of what they could be it's this idea of all I the, mean the dude, names. week 18 exactly. what are you talking about that's what I mean that's what I'm saying is like it feels like the market has latched on and said you know and, and they haven't given up on them um, so yeah I mean Saints are past is that what we're saying that's how it feels. I mean, it does feel, it feels a little bit square. If I, I hate to, yeah. uh, it seems a little obvious maybe, um, yeah. but I don't, I'm not touching Atlanta with a, uh, with my greatest enemy, Michael Penix's money. So there we are. <laughs> uh, the other a NFC South game uh, is the, I guess it's not as sexy by any means, but if Tampa wins, they win the division. Uh, currently Tampa is a four and a half point favorite it had open six. We'll keep it in that same format. So open six with a total of 37 Tampa Bay, six point road favorites down to four and a half with a total about a little bit higher, 37 and a half. So not too much movement there. Carolina, uh, I was on them and under last weekend. It was nice to split and find, find a way to get out of there. Um, I was very unimpressed with Jacksonville, but Carolina was somehow worse and got shut out, uh, which is even more miraculous, but that's how you win unders. I guess if one of your teams that you're backing uh, with the side play doesn't actually score. Um, but Tampa really took a huge step backwards because the division would be theirs if they had won clearly. Um, and now they got to go play this team. Who's uh, really fiery in the owner's box at least. Um, and <laughs> I think David Tepper paid a $300,000 fine for throwing drinks at, or at least one drink at the Jacksonville crowd. Um, where do we see, I mean, do you, do you think Tampa's in danger of losing to, I think a two win Carolina team at this point in the season, or, uh, does that other game we just talked about not matter? No, I mean, I think it's worth closing the loop. If we can use some, some corporate language here, um, we'll back, we'll circle back on this, but, uh, it's worth just breaking down the whole FC South. When I, when I've looked at through the box score and you kind of have watched, I've watched portions of this Bucks Panthers game um as I try to rewatch most of all, all the games from each week uh man the Bucks the offense was just awful it's it's something that we hadn't seen from them over the last month and a half uh Mayfield has been very very good Mike Evans and and to a certain extent Chris Godwin for for fits and spurts have a uh, have really helped. And, you know, the running game has been great, which is what Todd Bowles wants to do is, is run the football and they've, and they've done that. Well, what killed them is four turnovers. When you lose a turnover battle, four to zero. Um, You're not I mean, I usually in college, at least I'm, I'm handicapping a, a turnover at three, something 3.2 points for the other, other side, uh, maybe a little bit different than the NFL, but you're still talking about at least two possessions or two scores uh, that makes a difference and and the saints win by by 10 points um so what what kind of offense are we going to see i don't the, the panthers defense is is lifeless bryce young looks lost still is, has been lost all year uh i don't know if it's all of his fault but he there's been no real improvement there maybe the jacksonville defense was better i mean i think it's is it better than Tampa's? Maybe it doesn't matter to compare the two. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Jacksonville's run defense, I, I've said they're they're great and they're, it's still very good, like very very good. Um, so it's the passing, it's the secondary that's always been the concern, and the Panthers' passing attack is just not developed enough to to really take advantage of that. So they, if we're, they, I mean, I guess with no first round pick, then they don't 
they're fine with winning their, their owner clearly still cares and still traveling to games. Sure. Um, but what would it take you? I mean, four and a half clearly were far below the six though. Not hard to move between those numbers. Ultimately didn't cross any key key spots there. Once it fell below six, um, what does it take for you to back Carolina here after getting oh. out on the, on the road at Jacksonville and just, they're playing win one for the fans that are showing up and what might be a downpour. Like they were selling tickets for 41 cents a few weeks ago. Yes. There was, I think a, a rainstorm uh, expected and it actually showed, but I, I, it's hard for me to find reasons why Carolina is all of a sudden really invested in this game. I feel like they are booking their, trips to Rio de Janeiro at this point. Um, and, and I don't know why, I mean, Tampa certainly have not gotten a lot of, a lot of respect and to me has been a valuable home team because they've been um, pretty short numbers across the board, even mm-hmm. underdogs to a, a completely lifeless Jacksonville offense a couple of weeks ago. Now they just need to take care of business, which unfortunately those are things in spots that I like to be against. I just don't know where, spe- I mean, I'm certainly, a bit damaged uh, after that shutout loss last week when I took the side, but I guess I'm not as damaged because I basically split with the total. So, um, but it's hard for me to find a reason to be like, Oh yes. After watching that Carolina game. Uh, yeah. I believe in Bryce young can move the football and, and hang with a, a team that's been really hot. I mean, I guess maybe it's the injury uh, potential or, or injuries that are affecting Baker Mayfield. I think it's ribs. Mm-hmm. And then Mike Evans sounds like he's banged up. Godwin's been, barely practicing for a while. Um, but those guys all seem like they're playing. So where does Carolina, I mean, you, we were on this game that the reverse, uh, a couple weeks ago and Carolina, you, you like them back then. Maybe it was the firing of their coach, the new manager bounce as they'd call it in, uh, European football, but this is American football here. So what made you like that one? Uh, and how does that compare to where you feel about it now? Yeah, I think that that was one of those we tried to, to slip in there with, with a change in, in uh, messaging, a change in coaching staff, the idea that maybe the offense might see a different spark. Like you've said, you've, you've seen minor improvements. If we, if we're, if we're really looking hard with Bryce Young and the Panthers offense. Um, So yes, but that number that we were talking about, you know, I, I had it at five, correct. And you, I had a push, right. Yep. But at what point in that game, I mean, I'm watching that and I'm like, okay, sweet. You know, the, the Bucks defense lost half of its starters and, and was able to, uh, and the Panthers were able to score in junk time when that, when that game is it's at 11, was it, it wasn't, it may have been higher than that. It may, it, um, was, it was a lot too little for a while. And I just kept feeling like, yeah, but they need just one more, one more. development to really spread, 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 stretch this out. And they never were able to do it. Well, but then also like we're talking, if we're just talking pure numbers, if I was able to get the Panthers on the road plus five, now I'm able to get the Panthers at home plus four and a half. Uh, the number does feel a little different there. Um, well, I don't know how the, like a- anyone listening, you should not be factoring in a must win as as a decision for, for any of your handicapping. Um, I don't, I wouldn't feel good dumpster diving with the Panthers. I think even at four and a half, that's what it is. And I, I would not feel great about backing Tampa uh, minus four and a half either. Well, well some would call it dumpster diving. Uh, others would say if you're a raccoon, for example, finding dinner. So you never, know. <laughs> uh, we'll move now to the NFC North. We still have these two games to go through a Sunday night football game and we'll get you our best bets. So, so hang with us. Uh, Minnesota visits Detroit. I'll start with that one since Detroit has an outside chance at the two seed. Uh, open Detroit, a four and a half point favorite. That's down to three and a half total was 44 and a half at open. It's now up to 45 and a half. Um, I got to say incredibly disastrous decision by uh, Kevin, whatever his name is uh, for the Vikings who uh, put in a BYU grad, a quarterback that looked like he was a math student instead of uh, a football player. And it might've completely cost the, the season, uh, now they have to go on the road to Detroit, where uh, I think Minnesota was a three-point underdog a couple weekends ago uh, when I backed them at home against Detroit. And uh, Nick Mullins threw four picks. They weren't all, like, some were on fourth downs and some were, like, not so bad or good for position, like, field position changings. So they weren't as bad as it looked. And I wonder if that's part of why the decision was made. Um, but what do you think about Detroit? I mean, they seems like they 
Dan Campbell said they're playing, so they're going to try to win this game. And Minnesota has an outside chance to get in. Uh, what do, what do we think about this one? I expect not, nothing less from Dan Campbell's team. <laughs> think about last year when they had no at that point had no real shot to make they had no shot to make the playoffs, but still wanted to spoil Green Bay's season. Um, yeah, this seems like a good good opportunity if you if you want to if you want to bet on Detroit. Um, you know, obviously all week there's been the conversation about what happened in Dallas. Yeah. And the end of the game there. Um, my I when I watched the Detroit Minnesota the first time, I felt like there were many opportunities for Detroit to uh, to take that one. Um, I mean, they were running all over them, but then Minnesota was coming back, and that guy Justin Jefferson does seem to actually matter. He does. Um, and Very Mullen much. should be starting here, but like, I mean, if Detroit cares, uh, I feel like they will be able to run gashes through Minnesota like they did last time. Um, and I don't think that gets solved. And again, if you're flipping the the spread from the last game, now we're talking Detroit should be near a touchdown favorite and they're only a field goal. So um, seems, seems too short to me. I think we're running a little bit short on time. So let's m- move to the next NFC North game, unless you have a comment of interest. Um, we'll go to Green Bay hosting Chicago, another potential win in your end type of scenario. Chicago already eliminated but open Green Bay one and a half point favorite with a total of 44. It's now climbed to three with a total at 45. Uh, and Chicago's got some motivation here to, uh, I mean, their quarterback seems like he's kept his job for the future, but I think they have lost to Green Bay like a million times in a row and are trying to, uh, they, they've been losing to Green Bay longer than uh, it's been since Andrew Schnicker lost the best bet. So sure. um, I feel like at this point, we got to think like Chicago to me is is of interest getting a, a, a now a field goal uh, against a Green Bay team that looked great on Sunday Night Football, but it's because they are against an incompetent quarterback and kind of an incompetent coaching staff to put that quarterback in the line of fire. Um, do you want to talk me off of backing Chicago and, and, and backing Jordan love? Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it on this one. Um, Chicago has been, been one of the, the favorite teams of mine to over the last really half of the year. Um, they hit rock bottom and then the market responded. Um, I think that the defense has improved a decent amount. I think Justin Fields is playing for his job. And I think he, I, as much as you said, I still think he's playing for his job. Uh, I think well, that whole that motivation's there. It's important enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't think anything is, has been said, okay, well, we're, we're, we're for sure going it forward with, with Justin Fields as the starter. So I think he still has to, to prove a point. And yeah, J- Jordan Love had that little uh, renaissance in the, the, you know, when they were beating the chiefs and a couple games before that, but I mean, he, it's still a, a quarterback with significant flaws. Okay. So uh, it doesn't sound like you're talking me off Chicago. Um, no, I wouldn't talk you off Chicago. Let's get last to the, the, the slobber knocker, the granddaddy of them all Buffalo visiting Miami. And uh, we have an interesting little uh, switch to the line here. Miami opened a one and a half point favorite, a total of 48 and a half. Same total, but we've now flopped to or flipped to Buffalo, a two and a half point favorite, maybe potentially pushing three at some of the b- books that are out there. Uh, do you, I mean, a lot of injuries on Miami side, and it's hard to know yeah. what everyone will look like and what that team will look like. Waddle doesn't sound like he's going to play. Uh, but Buffalo, you know, they also could lose this game and potentially miss the playoffs. So it's incredible. It'd take a lot of scenarios. But uh, do you think Buffalo goes into Miami, that uh, raucous environment? Uh, just kidding, and uh, and steals the NFC or excuse me, the AFC East. Yeah, Buffalo's. I think they're going to have home field. I, I would assume they would outnumber the, the Dolphins fans. We'll see how that how that actually Maybe. plays out. I, the Dolphins are just so beat up. I mean, Chubb going down, Waddle obviously still on the mend. Raheem Mostert. You know, the touchdown stuff has been great for it was great for my fantasy team, but hmm. HN is is uh is better or or equal to to him. And so it just it it's just kind of disappointing to see the Dolphins dealing with so many injuries because the team as it was constructed at the beginning of this year, and I know that's not how any team that's not how any team looks, um, but it's it had more than enough to compete for a Super Bowl. Uh I 
to me, have you been impressed? Like the Bills have gone on this run, right? How impressed have you have you been with them? And I guess that's kind of a leading question based off my tone, but I, I would love your thoughts on this like little win streak that have gotten them back into this. I mean, they're barely throwing the ball. They're basically yeah. telling Josh Allen not to make bad decisions, which seems to work, but also requires your defense to be good. I, I just wonder if Miami's so banged up right now that it might not necessarily matter. Yeah, in Buffalo, I mean, they've – they've been the dom they've been able to to dominate Miami in in multiple different meetings over the last couple of years um it just it seemed like a bad matchup and uh, yeah it, it would make me nervous because the bills offense is just so much James Cook and it feels like the best player Josh Allen is still the best player on that offense is not leading the way and that that's uh, perplexing to me and um but Miami just doesn't seem like the team that they were not doesn't seem they aren't the team that they were six weeks ago indeed okay so now we're going to get to the ultimate best bet portion of our show as i well i guess i call that on my soccer one but our best bets for this one were just to remind everyone in case you didn't hear the first part of the episode or you're just maybe tuning in for the uh i guess the little sh short youtube clip or the instagram a little reel that we throw out there uh, Andrew Stickers, four knows last four picks. We're seven and one as a podcast last four episodes. So this is the time you should be listening. Uh, Shinny, you want to lead us off with your best bet? All right, we're going to go. We haven't done this before. We're going to go with a teaser as oh. my best bet. Okay. And we've, I don't know if that's against the rules, but this is no, no, no. at this point in the, in the season, this is fair game, baby. Go ahead. Spot. So let's, let's take the Colts up to seven and a half plus okay. seven and a half at home. And Let's go with a little different. We're going to take it still in that same advantage vein, but we're going to take the Bengals down to minus one at home against the Browns. So teaser Colts plus seven and a half Saturday night and mm. Bengals minus one against the Browns. All right. You just heard it. A underscore S C H N I T K E R. He's four and O in his last four best bets on this podcast, betting the pitch NFL edition. He has given you a teaser, a nice week 18 teaser, a little gift under the no longer Christmas tree. He's going with the Colts, a seven and a half point road, or excuse me, home underdog to Houston. And then adding six points or it's, I guess, deducting it from the spread on the, the Cincinnati Bengals. They're now a one point favorite on his teaser. I'm going to go. It's, I mean, it's a game we covered on this on this show. Uh, if you want to listen to the full episode, check YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or on Spotify. But I'm going to go with the, the Bears plus three. I, I feel like they have been playing so well. I love that uh, extra little candy, uh, potentially if they lose by less than a field goal. But I love the push on three. Justin Fields has been playing great. I think Chicago is a playoff team, uh, as we've seen in the last few weeks. Unfortunately, they've lost too many games in the beginning. So take the Colts plus seven and a half and teased with... The Bengals minus one and the Bears plus three. And that'll get you done for this episode of Betting the Pitch. Uh, saying out teasers, very, very challenging for me, apparently. Um, but we're going to get you all out and get this up to upload as a Thursday night episode. We got till Saturday or Sunday for the season to wrap up. But uh, check in with us next week. We'll be back on our normal schedule. Uh, Lord willing, I guess. Um, but we'll come back for a playoff run that hopefully will continue our unbeaten streak until we are all billionaires. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you all next week. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Leave a five-star review on our NFL podcast uh, anywhere you're listening or, or watching, uh, and I will have Andrew Schnicker read whatever you say on there unless it's something really derogatory about me. Thanks so much, and have a great time.